Uh, we're in the backside setup. If you hit this little arrow, you can choose from a list. Whoop, I missed. I'll cancel that. And I'm going to occupy 11. So I say OK. Now we need to measure the HI. And with that, you do that with a folding rule or a cake. And you simply measure the height of the instrument from the ground or the monument up to the center of the instrument. And on one side of the instrument, there's the word Leica with a little dimple on it. And that is the center of the axis of the instrument. And I read 472. So I'll enter for height of instrument of 4.72 and my rod height is the prism height and I have previously measured that at 4.25 and then where it says backside direction click on that and change that to backside point and then we'll choose from a list. And I'm going to backside number 12. Okay. So now what we're telling this instrument, we're occupying 11. We're going to backside 12. Both of these have known coordinates, so the instrument processor and the data collector processor can do the trig uh, trigonometry and actually uh, check the quality that we're set up on. And the next thing we want to do is hit enter to release on the instrument because if I check it and the instrument's on hold, it will not respond. It gets rather stupid while it's on hold. So now we're going to go by check, by distance, and the instrument and the data collector are communicating. And this may take two or three minutes, uh, not two or three minutes, but maybe several uh, maybe a minute, minute and a half. Once it takes off, it'll eventually take the shot, as long as you don't get some kind of an error. Now, what we want to look at is it gives me the distance, and it tells me the horizontal distance error is one one thousandth of a foot. So that is the actual distance that it shot versus the calculated distance between your adjusted coordinates, and that's good news. That's what we want to see. I only had an angular error of one second. Now, that's both good news is because we now uh, know that uh, uh, what we have just measured is very, very close to what we theoretically have calculated. So now I'll close that twice, and we're now ready to go to driver side shot. Now we're going to collect data. So, by using point management, if I want to do trees, and the point management says trees brush and tree lines, it starts with 400 to 4, 599. So I'll type in 400. Under the description, instead of side shot, I'll type in tree, or some acronym for tree. And now we will turn the estimate to one of these other prisms that we have set up that are next to a tree. And you might say, well, that coordinate of the tree is not exact, and that's true. However, you got to take, uh, you, you have to take in uh, concern or, or with the reality of what is the quality of work that we're trying to accomplish, what are we going to use this data for. Uh, so for a site map, we would need the approximate location of a tree, so if it's off by a foot, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, you could do a shot on either side of the tree trunk if it's a large tree, uh, say two foot in diameter, and then you could actually uh, inverse between those points and get the actual center of that tree. Uh, but for most practical purposes for estimating, uh, we need to know that there are in fact trees and the size of them approximately. And uh, 
uh, we'll use that for estimating. Do we have to remove the tree, or is the tree in the way of some function, or do we have to protect that tree? So there we just need to have the prism near the tree. I lock onto it, I focus to the rough center of the uh, prism. You don't have to get exactly dead center. And then we take the side shot. And I say, okay. And this gives me a 3D coordinate of that tree. So now, 0.400 is an angle right off of my backside of 101 degrees, 48 minutes, 51 seconds. It does a slope distance to there, so that is my distance to the tree. And it also gives me an elevation at the base of that tree. Now, that's only true if all prism rods are the same height. Now my prism height, which is my uh, height of rod, I placed at 4.25 feet. What I would recommend that you do is that you lay all the rods down or, or put them on a hard surface and make all the rods that you have the same height. And then when you enter that, you're good to go. Now, if you're down in a low area with the prism and the instrument man can't see you, he'll radio to you and say, raise the prism and then give me the prism height. So you can extend the pole, lock it, and then look on the side of the pole. There's two, two readings on the side of the pole in numbers. One's English and one is metric. Make sure you read the English. And you tell him, prism is at 6.4. So for that particular one shot, you have to change the prism height to 6.4 and it will then compute the actual ground elevation. Then when he's out of the low area, he wants to bring it back to the original 4.25 or whatever your original reading was so that you don't have to make adjustments for each and every shot. You want to try to keep your prisms as uh, constant as possible if, so long as you can see them. So now I'm going to go to, uh, it's now ready for shot 401 and since we're doing trees that will also help you save time so now I will go to the second tree to the second guy that I have on my crew if you're a crew of three you have enough equipment in your locker to do uh, two prisms simultaneously and again all you have to do is be any place on the prism take side shot say okay and it just recorded that one. And again, it gives you a 3D coordinate. So it'll save you time if you do all like items collectively because it does take the instrument guy some time to enter in new data for a description or change the number system. Since we started at 400, it counts to 401. It's now ready for number 402. After you take the first few shots as a foresight, it is always recommended that you go to the map and you see here is my instrument, there's my backside, these two are trees, and it says so. The, look on the ground, look at your map. Do they look similar? If they do, then you have no mistakes. You're, you're, you're good to go. So then you can continue back to input and you continue taking side shots. So that's it. That's all there is to it. When you're finished, you can then say cancel this, go back to uh, file, scroll down, say exit, say yes, and your file is automatically saved. That's all you have to do to close it out. When you return to the lab, make sure you plug the data collector back in so that it's charging, or the next time you go out, you're going to run out of power rather quickly. When you go back out, another time to do mapping, again, you need to tell uh, the data collector what the occupation point is, or if you can't see items on your quad the first time you're out there, you have to move the instrument. You need to go through the routine of backsight setup each time, tell the instrument what location it's at, measure the height of the instrument again, make sure you confirm the rod height, make sure the prism is on your backsight monument, tell it which monument the backsight is. So every time you move this instrument, you must repeat 
the back sight setup procedure. Then you can go in and take side shots again. So don't forget to do the back sight setup every time you move the instrument. 